Nix OS has been one of the wildest experiences I've ever had in Linux, but in a good way. And it really is kind of interesting. Now, I initially got started with Nix OS and even thought of it, and most times I don't cover weird, obscure distributions, but I got offered a job for $300,000 working for a hedge fund specifically covering Nix OS implementation and, and distribution. So it kind of piqued my interest, and I started looking around, and I said, hey, there's a lot of jobs out there for Nix OS, but there's not a lot of educational content. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to take two weeks, not make any YouTube videos, and I'm just going to hammer through a whole bunch of live streams and cover everything in Nix OS. So if there is somebody that wants to make a lot of money, they can become a Nix OS engineer, use these videos to start with, and then springboard. Now you might be thinking, how is a 10 minute YouTube video going to solve all this? Well, one, NixOS works a lot differently, it's reproducible, and you could probably take this eight minute video or 10 minute video and reproduce everything you need in my version of NixOS. But I want you to do a deeper dive. And I created a whole bunch of time stamped long videos for configuration. So if there is something you're missing in NixOS, I guarantee you I covered it in one of these videos. Uh, check out all these. I put timestamps for three very long live streams, but I kind of all silence, time stamped everything so you can record every single thing. You want to install a package, you want to change the display manager, you want to change your setup, you want to change your XDG path. All of it is included right in here. You can see all of these different setups, how to custom compile things through everything. And NixOS, uh, if you want to reference my personal configuration I used and kind of ended up with in here, you can do it here as well. But getting in NixOS and its reproducibility, everything's configured by that one configuration file. And I kind of put that at the very top here. Instead of configuring all these different programs with their own config file and etc, you're configuring everything really in, in etc nixos configuration.nix. There is another file that I recommend creating if your hardware is changing from distribution to distribution or, or you're, you're spitting it out to a whole bunch of different pieces of hardware, you can create your own hardware configuration for those pieces of hardware while keeping the configuration the exact same, which is really cool, but almost everything is done with just editing this file and then rebuilding. And I've done this uh, literally a hundred times uh, over the past couple of weeks, which is really neat. So check out all this, but let's get into what this looks like and kind of go through all of these different things. I even go into gaming on NixOS. I wanted to put it all on bare metal and explore. So the big thing is just coming into ETC NixOS configuration. So let's say you go through, let's just break down all these different lines. Uh, you put allow unfree because you might want to install Steam or a proprietary piece of software and you're going to need that configuration line. As far as settings, this is just extra cache and stuff. I, I wanted to install, I think, Lutris and some other things. So I added a secondary repo here. Not really needed if you're not doing any gaming on Nix. And then importing any extra files. So let's say you want to kind of break apart some of the configuration to another one. And we'll open up the hardware configuration.nix here in a second, just so you can see my, how I mount my drives, uh, extra like NFS mounts, maybe I didn't want to distribute out to everybody, all that will be included. Host names, how it boots, you configure the bootloader in here as well, which is kind of wild. So if you're doing Grub instead of system D like this system, you could change it all here. Again, everything is in this one file. Locale settings, x11 server now they they do support wayland as well i saw a bunch of wayland configuration if you don't want to use x server you can do that you can configure all my light dm with auto login normally this is done through etc light dm and then the comp file i'm configuring a compositor sound and then setting up my user here that that's all done right here too you can also see i'm setting my resolution right here all these things are already like 10 or 15 different configurations in other distributions, but again, it's just that one file. And we have a whole bunch of different system packages here. Let's say uh, we want to add a new configuration package. Let's see if there's something in here that I want to maybe add. I could add another package down here. Let's say you wanted to change to like Terminator. I could just add the package in here. You could add all these packages. You can see this is kind of what I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so if I put this on a fresh system, it will go out and download all these packages in one go because it's all sitting in there. So let's say we open up a new terminal 
and I want to add Terminator. Terminator, well, you can see it's not there. We could create a specific shell. Let's say we only need it for a, one little thing. We could go Nix shell dash P Terminator like this, and it will go out, download Terminator, and then put us in that shell. And then if we do Terminator like that, it will open up the Terminator prompt. Kind of wild, right? But as soon as we exit that prompt and we try Terminator again, well, it's not there because again, this is the system configuration and these are these little environment shells. So this little shell over here is like a Python shell or those types of maybe just virtual environments. You only need one or two things really easy to do. And that's what's really attractive about Nix is you can make it permanent. But if you just need it for like a one off thing, you could just create a, a, a simple virtual environment using Nix shell, which is kind of wild. But obviously this is what we want to do. I'm going to save this file out and add Terminator as a package. With that saved, we'll just do a Nix uh, sudo Nix OS rebuild and switch. And what this does is it references that config file, rebuilds anything and goes, hey, has anything changed here? We'll push it through and it'll go, oh, you know what? There's a new Terminator package. I'm going to go ahead and install that. And if there's anything else changed, it will also change and, and install that as well. With that done, and we can type Terminator, we now have it system-wide. It's that fast. That's insane. So you're adding all your programs all in one go right over here. But it doesn't stop there. There's certain things where we can't really change the environment or, or change the things like we normally would. A big example of this is I'm using DWM, which is a custom compiled version I personally have patched and built. It's unlike any other DWM in existence. And I have my own specific patches. So what happens there? I can't build it and then put it in the system. I can't do like a pseudo make install system wide. Then comes Nix overlays where it will literally reference all my source code and build it every time I do that switch. So let's say I make some changes in my DWM. All I have to do is a pseudo Nix OS rebuild. And if you look back in our rebuild that we just did, you can see it, it rebuilds it every single time. So it's kind of wild. So obviously don't put a big project in here to be built. Otherwise your rebuild times might be very long, but with DWM, it's so small that it's only a couple seconds. And then we add some like gaming tweaks here for a specific program. Say, hey, I want to make sure we enable this program and maybe open up some firewall rules for that specific program. All that's right here. We have virtualization in here, which we do these specific tags for virtualizing. You can see that in Vert Manager where we could just pull up our local media and do an install of like, like say we want Windows. We could easily put that on here. And then we have Flatpak and other uh, cool examples. And I even ex pimped out like the portal. So I have my specific theme. So when I pull up a uh, Thunar, you can see it's not like that blinding white custom theme. It's using all of my uh, LX appearance and stuff. So very, very cool way of doing it. And then anything else I want to do, like adjusting the system. So if I uh, type in Gparted, well, you can see it's trying to elevate to root. It knows, hey, th that needs a little bit more than what you have. And it'll launch Gparted. So this tweak right here is doing a policy kit that automatically elevates things. All this is extra that I've added, but I thought, hey, wow, what else can't you do? So I was trying to break it or find stuff I couldn't do in it, but there really was nothing. I, I can configure all the firewall, all the networking. If I want to do static IPs, I could put it here or I could put it in a separate Nix config file, which we'll pull up here in a second. I have all my fonts here. So I love the Meslo LG nerd font. It's kind of my default font for almost everything in my terminal. And I set all that up right here in just a little fonts. And then when we move back down to here, you got the system. It can auto update or you could set this to not auto update. Now, Nix OS, it does a release cycle about every six months to a year, just depending. And you can see the different system states, the channels it's going to grab. You can change all this configuration around. Now, looking at the hardware side of things, if we go over to Nix OS again, you can see, hey, this is everything I'm doing. I have a bunch of different systems. We're attaching uh, logical volume drives here, traditional like VFAT and EXT4 drives. 
We have NFS drives right here. So we can mount all my system files directly from my NAS box. So if I pull up Thunar, you can see the reference right here to grab directly from my Synology box back there. And all that's done independent. So if I wanna take this configuration, but I don't want these drives, obviously, the UUIDs would be changed and there wouldn't be a logical volume here. I would wanna remove these, or I could just take this and put it in my config.nix if I was like, hey, it's, the network's not changing. I wanna mount these drives on every system this gets deployed to. I just put it over to Nix config. And then all I do is install. And that is Nix OS. And you can see all the changes over the past couple of weeks. And I just wanted to kind of share this with everyone because NixOS does not have a lot of love and uh, there's not a lot of documentation out there, but I hope this kind of branches out. If you haven't tried it, I highly recommend it. And if you want a starting off or a jumping point, check out my, my GitHub repo. I put all the configuration files right here on Chris Titus Tech, uh, NixOS-Titus. This is my personal Nix configuration. I highly recommend just copying or, or just taking the sections that you need that you're trying to do, and you can copy from my Nix. And this is just the starting point. There's a lot more automation that can go into Nix that I couldn't cover in this short video, like Flakes or Home Manager, and many people are gonna comment at the bottom, which you should, but I at least wanted to give you a jumping off point in Nix. Explore it. It is an amazing, amazing Linux distribution, and it blew my mind when I went through it all and have been using it for almost a month now, uh, or several weeks at least, and, and have created just so much different videos over on Titus Tech Talk as I've been live streaming it a ton. So with that, I'm closing out NixOS. I just wanted to share it with y'all. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section, and I'll see you in the next one.